This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about why a government 51% attack will not work on Bitcoin. This is a question from Badger W7997, enthusiastic novice question. Why can't the US government just print a billion bits of paper, buy 100,000 ASIC machines, these are the Bitcoin mining machines, own the system and kill Bitcoin with a 51% attack? I want to be a Bitcoin maxi, but this one question breaks my commitment. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Important background, it's impossible to mine Bitcoin with CPUs or GPUs today. You'd be very lucky to mine. I think it's something like one block every thousand years using these. You can rent an army of CPUs or GPUs to attack a currency like Monero, but not Bitcoin. The combined power of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud would be less than 1% of Bitcoin. This is a great statistic from the Bitcoin Mining Council from the third quarter of 2022. It would take approximately 66 tera terawatts to attack the Bitcoin network using standard cloud computing hardware. That's the equivalent of three and a half times what the entire Earth is currently producing in terms of terawatt hour. So that tells you how very secure Bitcoin is. But if you want to attack it, the real way to do it is not with CPUs or GPUs or some sort of cloud attack. You'll, you'll want to use a lot of ASICs. ASICs, highly specialized Bitcoin mining rigs, they can do only one thing, which is to run the SHA-256 hashing algorithm many times every second. This is what an ASIC looks like, and this is what SHA-256 hashing looks like. You basically click the hash button, you change the number here, you change the nonce, and you look for an output that has a certain number of leading zeros or is below a certain difficulty target. That's basically what Bitcoin mining is. It's not dirty. It's not toxic to the environment like something like gold mining is. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that like and subscribe buttons. To launch a 51% attack on Bitcoin, you'll need to have at least 51% of the Bitcoin network's total hash rate. So to do this, you're going to need to either buy or build or steal a lot of these Bitcoin mining rigs, these ASICs. Now, obviously, any government has the power to buy or steal a lot of stuff. They have the power of the police and the military. They have the power of the printing press. They have the power to tax and create a lot of money out of nothing using their central bank. But it's still difficult for a government to stop people from noticing when they do a big project, especially with social media and everyone having a camera on their phone everywhere. So if you want to steal a lot of ASICs, you have to go after some big targets like this. This is North America's largest Bitcoin mining facility by developed capacity. It's in, it's called Winston, Winston or Winst, Winstone or Winstone. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced, but this is owned by Riot and it's located in Rockdale, Texas. You can see what a large facility it is. And you can imagine the government trying to take this over. This is not something they could do without people noticing in the area, without employees reporting it, without helicopters seeing it, etc. This would be all over social media. If Twitter were to censor it, then it would be on Noster. And the word would get out. Bitcoiners talk to each other. And so the word would get out that the government has just seized a giant mining farm. And this would be an idea that a 51% attack was coming. This would give people advance notice and it'd be very easy to prepare for this. We can make some small tweak to the code that would make these machines uh, no longer work. So it's very difficult for a large government to do something like this without people noticing. Now, what about building a lot of ASICs instead? Here's the question. Does anyone honestly believe that the US government is able to secretly and comp competently set up its own chip foundries, fabs to create ASIC chips? This is the same government that hasn't been back to the moon since 1972 and that was unable to set up a functioning healthcare website, as we see here, healthcare.gov back in 2013. This is the same government that's having trouble even keeping its military and its weapon systems up to date. Now, the U.S. government might be able to build its own ASICs if it really decides to do this and this becomes a national security issue, but it would take years and years of development. And again, we would hear about a project as large as this. It would be very difficult to keep something like this quiet. In the era of social media, it's impossible to have real secrets. If the government chooses to try to buy a lot of ASICs instead, the large companies that manufacture them and their sales middlemen will begin to notice and will spread the word. ASIC manufacturers, the big companies themselves, are incentivized not to let a government try to destroy Bitcoin since their whole business model depends on making ASICs, which can only be used for one thing, which is mining 
Bitcoin. Not to mention that some of these large ASIC manufacturers like Bitmain are Chinese companies and they're really not going to want to do anything to help out the US government anytime soon. So my question for people who, who ask me about 51% attacks is, uh, my answer always is, why would a government go to all this trouble when there are simpler solutions if you want to go after Bitcoin? Here's an easy way to do it. Hey guys, we just jailed all the top Bitcoin influencers on YouTube and Twitter, bye bye Trader University. If you use Bitcoin, you're going to jail too. So that would be probably a more direct way to do it. They wouldn't have to spend billions of dollars or wait years and it would be much more direct. They still wouldn't be able to stop Bitcoin. You cannot stop a peer to peer protocol, but they could certainly scare a lot of people in this way. They may drive in the process. They may drive more people into Bitcoin if people realize what's happening and that there's a reason the US government is trying to deny its people a life raft like Bitcoin. And so it could have the perverse effect of driving people into the arms of Bitcoin. But either way, even jailing some Bitcoin influencers or, or people in the space that would not be able to stop a piece of software that is spread all over the globe. But this is definitely a lot easier than setting up massive chip foundries and trying to keep it secret or outright stealing ASICs. And in present day, in the present day United States, you can't, the government cannot just steal things. Of course, we could reach the point of a crisis where they can do this, but even, even today, there would be a lot of court issues. This thing would take time. And, and even the US government, when it wants to take your stuff, has to go through certain processes, especially on a large scale thing. If they're gonna confiscate an entire publicly traded companies mining rig. They can obviously uh, take out individuals and households and stuff as they've done in the past. But this is this is a much different thing. There is there are still certain private property rights in the US which have been deteriorating and will probably continue to, to deteriorate. But right now it's unthinkable the US government doing something like this unless we're in a sort of martial law emergency crisis situation, in which case you just ban Bitcoin and you start to jail Bitcoiners. That would be probably the more, the route that they would take. Here's the other thing. There's not a whole lot that you can do with a 51% attack. They're very, very limited things that you can do. And a lot of people don't realize this. You cannot rewrite the whole chain. You cannot destroy Bitcoin with, with a 51% attack, even if you're the largest, most powerful government in the world. What you can do is you can create lots of empty blocks that don't contain transactions. This would be like a denial of service attack. Again, if you only have 51% of the hash rate, only 51% of the blocks are going to be empty. The other 49% will have transactions in them. And so it will not be a pure denial of service attack. This is why you actually need much higher amounts of hash rate. If you want to do this attack seriously, you would want to have something like 70 or 80 or 90% of the hash rate, which would be even more difficult to attain as we saw, because it's very difficult to get your hands on a lot of ASICs. So what can you do with a 51% attack? You can create empty, empty blocks. You can censor transactions. In other words, you can create blocks that omit certain transactions that you don't want included. If you are a 51% attacker, you can also spend some Bitcoin that you already own. And if the US government is doing this, it would have to be Bitcoin that they already own, which would be qu quite ironic. You can spend Bitcoin and then remine that block that contains your spending transaction so that the transaction never happened and you still have your Bitcoin. But economic attacks like this on Bitcoin really don't make any sense. It's almost impossible to make money doing a double spend with a 51% attack since the attack itself is so expensive to set up and maintain. And that's why I'm making this, I made this video about a government attack because the only real reason to do a 51% attack is if you're a nation state and you wanna to try to harm Bitcoin. There's no real smart way of doing it to make a lot of money. Now, if anyone like an exchange, let's say someone's trying to do a double spend attack like this, where they spend the Bitcoin and then try to remind the block as if the Bitcoin was never spent. If anyone like an exchange like Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini, for example, suspect that a 51% attack is happening, and we would see this if there's some unknown piece of the hash rate that's producing a lot of blocks, what they'll do, do is they'll just increase the confirmation time before you can uh, withdraw your money. So instead of waiting six blocks, six confirmations, maybe they'll wait 12 confirmations, which is two hours, or they'll make, or they'll wait 18 confirmations. They can, they can really wait as long as they want. So it'd be very difficult if you were doing this as an economic attack to cash out via an exchange. And anyone else who was transacting in Bitcoin and knew what they were doing, they'd be looking to make sure there wasn't a 51% attack happening or an empty block attack or, so, or something like that. So let's return to the question, why can't the US government just print billions, billions of bits of paper, buy 100,000 ASIC machines, 
own the system and kill Bitcoin. Here's the part I want to talk about now. Kill Bitcoin with the 51% attack. 51% or greater attack would not kill Bitcoin. As we said, it would simply slow down transaction times if there were empty blocks, every other block being empty or maybe even more frequent than that. It would simply slow down transaction times or possibly if you have a very pure empty block attack where there are no transactions going through, it would make it impossible to transact in Bitcoin for hours, days, maybe weeks, as long as the attack went on. In the process, this attacker would need to spend a fortune in electricity to do this. And here's the thing, as soon as the attacker stopped, everything would go completely back to normal with Bitcoin. And the miners, the honest miners would be still, would go back to processing transactions as the attacker's hash drops off the network. This would be an amazing ad, a great ad for Bitcoin. Nation state attacker spends tens of billions of US dollars and still fails to stop Bitcoin. Now, this in itself may be a good reason that governments have never attempted something like this. They don't want to run an ad for why Bitcoin is so powerful and so difficult to destroy. Now, if there's ever a 51% attack on Bitcoin, you can be sure that we'll be covering it 24 seven on this channel. But here's what you should do. Don't spend or send your Bitcoin if there's a 51% attack going or an empty, empty block attack going. If you must accept Bitcoin for payment, wait more than six confirmations and also basically just keep hodling, which is probably what you'd be doing already until the attack is over. Here are things that a 51% attack cannot do. Cannot create fake Bitcoin or increase the maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoin. Cannot steal your Bitcoin. Cannot create a fake transaction that moves your Bitcoin unless they have your private keys, which miners do not, unless you've shared it with them somehow. 51% attacks cannot change the consensus rules in any way. 51% attacks cannot force any node to accept a block or transaction that violates the consensus rule. So there's this very nice balance of powers between the nodes, the non-mining nodes, and the mining nodes in Bitcoin. And Satoshi did a brilliant job of setting this up. Now, a sustained 51% attack on Bitcoin might have killed it in the early days, in the very early days, in 20, 2009, 2010, 2011, if people gave up on it and gave up on ever being able to transact if you had an extended empty block attack and this denial of service attack went on too long. But it's far too late for that now. Bitcoin has become international, has become global. It has become too big and powerful and decentralized and dispersed in order to stop in this way. And there are just too many really smart and wealthy people watching over it, keeping an eye out for potential attacks like this and alerting the community so people could do something about it. Not so its competitors like Bitcoin BSV, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, which is a failed fork of the real Bitcoin. You don't want to touch stuff like this. They've been rocked by 51, 151% attack after another three of them in three months. And here's another one where there was a reorg of 100 blocks. And you know this guy. This is not a guy you want to trust. Bitcoin has never suffered a 51% attack in its entire history. And I think this should tell you something. Either ad adversaries are unable to do it, or it's just not worth doing, or they just don't want to do it and create a global ad for why the Bitcoin uh, network is indestructible. That would be have very perverse consequences that they don't want to do, and they don't want to help Bitcoin in this way. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.